The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying, and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. The Cryptid Files is a weekly discussion and debate covering all things cryptid. Mysterious and terrifying creatures are our passion. Join us each week as we bring you groundbreaking interviews and accounts, info from research in the field, as well as data and experiences of our own. From the widely known cryptids to the most strange and obscure, we want to believe. Do you? Now, improvised search parties are attempting to find it. Just what it is, no one is sure. And then when it came up over the trees, I could see it was a, a bird, a huge bird. We couldn't believe what we really saw. This thing was standing there, but it had a body just like a man. You could see muscles in its legs. We sit there for a minute, looked at each other, and then we took off. Welcome to the Cryptid Files. I'm John. I'm Cindy. And I'm Lily. So we have a new sound tonight, as you all may know. And we got some uh, new audio equipment. Kind of sad I didn't get to hear the intro, though. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm working on it, though. <sighs> okay. I'll, I'll need a splitter and all that other kind of stuff. Like I said at Walmart today, but we do need a splitter. Walmart today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> so tonight we are um talking about some stuff stuff and things um first off let's jump here and chat hello everybody in chat I what's up mags what's up shay rebecca Hi guys. Matt, what's going on i hope we sound good if we're not sounding good let us know in chat um this is the first time with this sound equipment that we got and i think it sounds pretty good but anyways. Much better than before. Yes. And I hope everybody had am, an amazing week. And you guys, I hope you had a good week. Um, hey, Fran, what's going on? Hey, Fran. <laughs> nice to see you in there. It is Saturday night, and we're ready to get creepy. Yeah, we're ready to get lit. A little lit. Creepy. Lit and creepy. Creepy and lit. Yep. So oh, tonight, <laughs> we are going to be discussing... Don't put, your phone man. Don't put your phone over there, dude. What are you doing? You're making it sound crazy. What are you doing, guy? Okay, just give me a minute. Guy. What are you doing, guy? I have to, uh... <laughs> yes, we are speaking of the Mothman. The Mothman himself. Who, um, primarily resides in Point Pleasant, mm -hmm. West Virginia. Mm -hmm. As far as we know. Well, he has been seen other places. Absolutely, he has. Yeah, he definitely has. All He's around the world, in Chicago, fact. Chicago, West Virginia. Recently in Chicago. Russia, yes. Germany, Japan. Yep. The Twin Towers during 9-11. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch of other encounters that... In Mexico as well. Mexico. Yes. A whole bunch of other encounters that people don't realize. They think it all starts with the grave diggers, and it really doesn't. It actually no. starts before that. It was the same night. It was. But it, was, it started before the grave diggers. Just two people who happened to be in the wrong place at the right time. That's right. Um, and also, people don't realize that there are other things that are kind of wrapped up in Mothman, such as aliens and the men in black, particularly one named Indrid Cold. So you may learn a little bit about this mysterious um, fellow tonight. Because we're we're gonna kind of interweave that into our uh, Mothman four one one. Yeah. So let's get to it. Absolutely. So Mothman, um, basically, he it's a West Virginian folklore. Uh, the Mothman creature reportedly uh, has seen has been seen in Point Pleasant area from November twelfth, nineteen sixty six, to December fifteenth, nineteen sixty seven. The first newspaper report was published in Point Pleasant Register, dated November 16, 1966, titled Couples See Man-Sized Bird. So a lot of people um, <sighs> saw this as a bird or possibly a big owl, um, but 
it, that was not the case. Uh, yeah. So to give you the uh, stats on Mothman, Mothman is approximately seven feet tall. I wonder if seven feet tall just is to from the um, tip of the toes to the tip of the head, or does that include um, the, the actual height of the wing as well? No, that's just from his that's feet what to I his thought. head. So the height of the wing could be it, it could make be it ten feet, ten, could ten make feet him or ten more. feet tall. Absolutely. Um, so he stands with just his body, approximately seven feet tall. His wingspan yes. is ten feet from tip to tip. That is. That's a ginormous those are big wings. Uh, wingspan. That is amazing. So um, the other abilities that he has when um, taking off, he does not flap his wings. Yeah, I find that to be extremely. He just goes interesting. straight up. Like, what does how do, how does the propulsion happen? Maybe With he just legs. does it so fast that we d- that people don't see it's it. It's like a Superman thing. Or his yeah. glutes. Maybe are he fire. takes the two steps, step step, boom. You know, well, it's like maybe Superman just, just one two bam. Maybe he just, uh, what's up, Gnome? Foot. What's up, Fran? And Rebecca, Shea? yes, you are right. What's I'm glad on? that someone knows about Mothman. So we're, we're, we've got people on here who are knowledgeable. Yep. Always exciting. So anything you want to discuss about this, we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he is a, uh, he's a, an inf- a, a formidable <clears throat> um Oh, yeah. Being. Um, Absolutely. He, he also, his screech that he... Puts out. This is why people probably think he's an owl or a bird of some sort because his screech tends to sound like um, that of bus brakes, city bus brakes, or train brakes when they screech and kind of the high pitch. Yes. I so do we do, do we have a sound that it is uh, oh, that resembles? Um, we we just do to give have, an example of something we, we might. That this was actually caught at a nightclub where Mothman was supposedly seen. So a let's check it out. Nightclub, yeah. that's sleep. right. Let, let, let's, well, just, hey. let's just check it out. I'm going to be the only one that can hear this one, but this is <sighs> so supposedly sad. the closest thing to Mothman. Check this out, guys. All right, so that was Mothman in a recent nightclub sighting. Um, he was just having a good old time. <laughs> <laughs> so after a few karuna. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So similar to Mothra, okay? Who Mothra. that is? Yeah, well, you don't, you're too young for that. Oh, yeah. Mothra was one of um, Godzilla's either enemies or, or friends. When Godzilla was still black and white. Yes. When Well, no, no, no. Got even Mothra all the way up into, until 2019. I know, but it started out black and white. Yes, it did. Yeah. In the 1950s, I believe. Yes, it 1954. did. 1954. So, yeah, Mothra like that. fought Gojira over yep. the city of Tokyo. Yep, yep, yep. Mothra, Mothra was actually the good guy. Was he really? Yes, because uh, wow. Mothra had a um, a connection with a, a, with so, a little girl. So does this mean that Mothman is actually a good guy? Well, it's funny that you say that. Funny. Because Mothman, not Mothra, Mothman, Mothra is his cousin, by the way. <laughs> oh, is that what yeah, that's his cousin? Oh, see, see, little you know, known. Yeah. And, yeah. So, little, you know, known. Mothra, Mothman and Mothra actually tried out for the same. Please, guys, you cannot. Please, no. What? Don't, don't, no. No? No. You're not buying it? No. All right. So anyways, <laughs> Mothman, um, I would look at him as a good guy as far as the cryptid goes. I wouldn't look at him as a bad guy. I would definitely look at him as a good guy only because he is more of a um, an, uh, an omen or a prophetic cryptid or or a uh, harbinger of doom. Um, doom. It's interesting. Do you think that, like, is... Is he some sort of an angel? Like, That's wouldn't a very that be an inter- th- th- that would be an interesting avenue to explore? Because, I mean, you know, we all as human beings have this um, ideal of what an angel looks like in our head with the long robe and you know the big wings that are beautiful white feathered wings and all these things. But, I mean, you know, we really don't know. We, we don't know if possibly. Maybe that's what an angel looks like right. or some type of angel. Right. You know, just because they're angels doesn't mean they have to be just, you know, lily white and look beautiful. 
Oh, thanks. Oh, you're, you're so welcome, Lily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Glad Mothman, you're joining us for the entire show tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Mothman also has oh, been seen with um, glowing red eyes. Yeah, that's often. And often when you look into the eyes, you can go into a hypnotic... Wow. And you <laughs> <wouldn't> <laughs> have I must have looked into yeah, Mothman's all, eyes. You go into a hypnotic trance. Yes. Some of the uh, side effects of Mothman are um, pink eye. Yes. Um, mental problems after the fact. Yeah, oh, like, I must like, have looked into his eyes. Yeah. And nightmares, in mm-hmm. fact. Like, just mental hysterics. Yeah. Nightmares. Yep. Um, uh, you, you can actually often feel sick and get dizzy. Right. Um, people pass out, actually. There are people who... In fact, if you watch the Yes Show, Mountain Monsters. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> they, they went on the hunt for Mothman one time, and Buck, <laughs> one of the younger of the crew, looked into the eyes of the Mothman and what happened to Buck. Do you remember? He tripped. He, he fell tripped flat out. on his face. All right. So, in chat, um, Matt says, kind of like my ex, Harbinger of Doom. <laughs> That's tough. Uh, paranormal People, which is my friend Mags over in the UK. Welcome, Mags. Welcome. Uh, she says, so he's a little bit like the Banshee, a harbinger of death or doom. So he would be a harbinger of doom. He, he's basically a warning sign that something bad is going to happen. Yeah, I don't think that he brings it on. I no. think, uh, just my opinion. And also in chat, you can share your opinions about whether or not you think that he actually is the cause of these things or right. is he a warning. Right. So I think to myself, I think that he is warning people because of the um particularly the mine incident that happened in germany we'll talk about in a few minutes but um that leads you to believe that possibly he is um there to warn you yeah fran in chat says i think the angels were portrayed as winged and so on but i believe they look like us Ah. so maybe mothman is just not uh, not an angel but maybe he's just you know maybe some sort of elemental maybe That'd be interesting, too. So is he maybe drawn to what's about to happen? Um, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. It's, it's, it, there could be, there are a million ideas about it. Um, so Andrew says in chat, angels appear different in heaven than on earth. Eight eyes, different body types, just saying. Interesting. Yep. That is very interesting, actually. So, yeah, I mean, I- I- in different, different religions, um, they look at... Um, angels and 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 things differently they don't look at them um like how we would tend to see them with feathered wings and human looking and, right right and angelic they just yeah maybe maybe they maybe he is it's possible maybe he's a form of an angel just it's maybe possible. i've thought of, of i've thought about that often actually about mr mothman yeah. maybe yeah. he's a flying bigfoot who knows That's flying bigfoot with a moth head yes yes well i mean he's also been Looked at as a dragon. He's yes. also oh, been looked it. at yeah. as an in owl. Fact, they but do we're going to get to that. Yeah, they do call him that. Um, in some places, they actually, I think it was the Chernobyl um, incident um, that they ended up calling him um, Man Dragon. Man Dragon. Hmm. Or it might have been the um, the, the uh, Zianti uh, Dam incident, actually, too. They might be both. Right. Because they were both in, in um, not a very far away proximity from one another. So... But the it, it the Mothman um, phenomenon really picked up steam um, in Point Pleasant, of course, in 1966, and that's where it sort of really um, got a lot of attention from a lot of people all over the world. That that was the springboard, I think, not necessarily the beginning of it by any means, because. Um, these other incidents that took place, I know the earliest one was 1928, and I think that was the mine collapse, actually, in Germany. Yeah. Really? Yes, I believe it was. Um, and um, the 1926, actually, also, I don't think that was it. I think it was the dam collapse in um, the ZRT dam collapse in southeast China. That's where, actually, the first reported sighting of um, a Mothman-type creature or the Mothman was, so... Well, that would make sense that he can get around pretty well. I mean, he's no Santa Claus, but he can supposedly travel upwards of over 100 miles an hour. He's fast. Well, you can only imagine with a wingspan of that. Well, not to mention the fact that if he has some sort of elemental type um, nuance to himself, then he may be able to just dip through portals or 
um, whatnot or <coughs> dimension to dimension, possibly. <coughs> so I just want to throw something out there. Mama Deb <coughs> says in chat, how do you feel about the idea he's an owl? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if he is an owl because most times he's been seen has been at night. And a lot of the drawings that they do put out about Mothman, he is kind of owl-ish looking. It, yeah, he is. My only um, issue with that is the fact that um, the the several people who have seen him report before they even know that he's any sort of flying creature, that he stands. He's a figure, you know, an outline of a figure with a body, a human body with legs and arms um, you know, a, a, a human form and his uh, wings, I guess, are tucked behind him. So they see what they think is a man standing there. And then all of a sudden, this man has eyes that start glowing red and these wings that just come out and he takes off. So a lot of the reports start out as it thinking, you know, people thinking that this is a, a guy. So that's, uh, that's the only thing that kind of... Um, would throw out anything to do with it being an owl. As much as owls can look huge when they're flying over, and at night you can't see as well. Um, a lot of people have seen this creature close up and close enough to know, you know, when it's flying beside their car right outside their window, you can see that this is no owl. Uh, it lands on the hood of the car. In one incident, I know um, there was a woman, her older brother and her two younger siblings, a brother and sister, we're driving out near the TNT area and I think near the old factory where the um, Mothman has been yeah, seen. Yeah, the TNT area was an old World War II bunker where they they did, what was it, um, ammunition or something to Am that effect, Yeah, ammunition or? testing. And there are uh, several of the old hollowed out cylindrical bunkers that are still standing today. In Point Pleasant? In Point Pleasant, okay. right outside of town. Hmm. And um, people have reported seeing this thing near there. A lot of people, while they're driving through there, um, it's really interesting to me that this thing is so um, aggressive, especially when people, primarily when people are driving. Oh, yeah. It, it was known for um, chasing vehicles. Like I said, uh, these vehicles would exceed 100 miles an hour. Mothman, or whatever you want to call him, was able to keep up with them. He was also would dart out in front of vehicles, chase them down, try to stop in front of them. Uh, maybe it was just a warning sign that he was just trying to give them. I don't know. It's interesting. Two men on a motorcycle as well. Yep. Uh, he had actually, they saw it fly over and land on the uh, um, factory and went to check it out right. and saw it standing in the factory. Interesting. So, uh, they were, they said not more than 15 feet from it, hmm. uh, which would terrify the pants off me if oh, you're yeah, in an old sure. factory at night. Yeah. So it's very large, very... Yeah, I mean, like I said, between six to seven feet tall. Yeah, yeah, and, and on the hoods of cars, that I think there are a couple of reports where people stopped and actually did land on the, the hood of their car looking at them. So um, he likes to chase cars for, for whatever reason. Uh, I have no idea why, but um, he... He flies after and goes after cars. So, so uh, Mags and Chat brings up. Uh, you keep saying he. Do you think there is a she about? Uh, it wouldn't. It wouldn't mm. surprise me. Good question. It could be a moth woman. I mean, we, the could only reason why we say he is because of the name Moth Man. Yeah. But it, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I'm sure if there's Bigfoot out there, um, there's you know male and female right. versions. So they, they very well may be. But the reason why we say also say he too is because some people tend to believe that he may be um, um, a uh, government experiment. Right. And, they, and that was released. Of course. Well, and I think, too, because it is called Mothman, I yeah. think everyone has the tendency to refer to it as a he or him. Well, a lot of the reports are man-like body with muscles. Right. And, but, I yeah, it, it very well could be a female out there, too. I've never seen anything that did report any sort of genitalia, so, yeah, you no, know, we they, just make gross. assumptions. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm see, saying? With Mothman, it's kind of interesting. With the research that we did on Mothman, everything was the same. The description was the same from yeah. 1966. Sixty-six. Yeah, a sixty-six. Actually, from nineteen twenty-six on. Well, I mean, but if you do the actual report right. where where he became popular mm -hmm. 
from 1966 up until I believe it was 2019. It's been 2019 because, yeah, yeah. Um, around the Chicago area, he has been cited. Uh, I think actually in October or November of 2019, there were reports of Mothman um, near the Chicago area, which leads you to wonder what's going on in Chicago. Uh, that's something interesting to think about. I was thinking about that the other day. Um, the earlier reports are pretty much, um, I guess, generic type reports. There's not a lot of research to go on with the 1926 um, report uh, at near the uh, Zianti Dam. Uh, I do know that. Um, he was seen right before the dam collapsed. And the dam uh, collapsed on April 26th of 1926. And there were 15,000 people who were killed during that um, disaster. And they referred to this thing as the man dragon uh, before that. Right. So he was sighted shortly before the collapse of the dam in 1926. Very interesting. And the, the um, Germany... Incident happened in uh, 1978. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that now. And they call him the Freiburg Shrieker in Germany. Freiburg Shrieker. Freiburg Shrieker. Freiburg. Because it was Freiburg. Fried bird. Fried bird. No, not, <laughs> not fried birds. We're not eating chicken. Not oh, fried stop bird. playing. <laughs> fry bird. Fry bird. Fry bird. Yes. There you go. Well, that sounds kind of good. That's at the fry bird chicken sea. Mm. Stop, Lily. The fry bird <laughs> shrieker because he, of course, the crazy shriek that fry bird um, was heard coming from <laughs> the creature. Um, a little while, I'll actually read the account of um, of the fry bird shrieker at the. Uh, collapse of the Freiburg Dam in Germany in 1978. So Darren has a question in chat. He says, what is the main purpose of Mothman? That is a good question. I think as it's your phone. Far, huh? I think your phone's making the buzzy buzzy. So as far yeah. as I know, yeah. um, as far as we know, Mothman's main purpose is to warn people. Or... Or maybe to just show up right before disaster happens, or cause the disaster. In some I way. mean, it, I guess there's a po- there's a distinct possibility that that's true. It's really just how you look at it. I mean, it could be either, or it could be. I mean, does he feed off the energy from? Is he waiting because he feels the buildup of this energy coming, and he just sort of, you know, energy vampires the 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 whole it scene when this happens because. Uh, there are reports of him being on scene after these things have happened, like shortly after. Even in 9-11, uh, a gentleman actually got a photograph of the towers uh, when they were coming down or right after, shortly after the second tower came down. And there appears to be something that looks very much like the Mothman right there. Not to mention there are accounts of people seeing him before the towers collapsed. Right. So we have another question in chat. I don't mean to cut you off. No, but go ahead. Uh, Darren also had a question. Has the Mothman killed people? Not to my knowledge. There aren't any reports that we no. have found. We, normally when we do these reports, it takes us all week because we want to go through all with week. a fine-tooth comb. And, and we not do. once have we ever found anything about him killing moth, uh, no. Mothman. No. <laughs> killing people. Yeah. Although killing I people. do, I did read a report, which is, that is very unsubstantiated, but I did read a report where uh, a man claims that Mothman ate his puppy dog. So... I mean, there have been reports of Mothman standing outside my window. There have been... Yep. In report- the room, I even. was just getting that, but oh. you took the words right out of my oh, mouth. I was no. just about to say that. Oh, no. Uh, but yes, outside my window, in my bedroom, so on and so forth. But yeah. Eating my puppy. Uh, I didn't oh, I hear that one. Mothy got to eat, you know? Yeah. I mean, again, when we did all the uh, research on this creature... The description was all the same. It was. Nothing changed. The height. No. The height was maybe between 7 feet to 10 feet, and the wingspan was between 10, yeah. and, twa- twa- ten, <laughs> ten and 14 feet. It's going feet. around, folks. It's going yeah, around. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing that, that I think to me, one of the most terrifying accounts is when the guy, it showed up in his room because he saw it outside of his room at a street light first, mm-hmm. looking at the window. And it, then he saw it standing right beside his bed in his room terrifying he said that he felt like it was just horrible he said he was absolutely positive 
that this thing was sent straight from hell. It right. made him feel like that. And he said it was evil and bad. And he was sure with every fiber of his being that this thing was demonic and straight from hell. What do you do in a situation like that? When you just have like... You did what he did. You close your eyes and you pretend creature. like it's not there, I oh, guess. No. But um, he, he did. He closed his eyes and prayed and, and he opened his eyes and it was gone. That's crazy. So take that for what it is worth. Welcome back, friend. I see you made it back. Hello, friend. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, I, I don't know. It's um, a, a mix between extremely terrifying and very intriguing, like exciting. Mothman is, has been an interesting um, study for sure, I think. The thing that I found in interesting about doing the research, like I said three times already, is nothing has changed on the reports. Yeah. Everything very as far consistent. As it, yeah, everything was very consistent from 1966 mm -hmm. to 2019. Uh, yeah, and and the funny thing is, uh, people have studied the heck out of this thing. Yep. And um, most of our research, of course, comes from night between 1966 and 67, and um, but. You know, it, it would be interesting to have people, a group, someone out there who is doing intensive research modern day in the areas. Um, and uh, for people to around the world to know more about Mothman so that I'm sure if more people were more informed on this, that reports would pour in. Absolutely. I really feel like they would because you, you take Bigfoot and, you know, all these other wonderful cryptids and they're more widely known. It's not such a concentrated thing. So um, I think the reason that we're lacking knowledge on so many of these cryptids is because so many people don't know it or just don't believe it. Right. And they just, the stories just aren't there. But the funny thing about this one is he is not one that, you know, is off in the woods. Nope. You know, he's not all in these rural areas. This thing is in cities, populated places. Yeah, he doesn't have an address. No. No. So you, you, you can't GPS your way to his house and find him. No. He's just all of a sudden, boom, he's there, and then boom, he's gone. You know, during 1966, when the, resource, the sightings were soaring, by the way, in, um, they, they were actually hand-in-hand hand with UFO sightings at the right. time above Point Pleasant. Absolutely. Um, during that time, People were out in droves over at the TNT area and at the old factory. They, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people lining the streets and cars day and night to try to find this thing with guns to try to hunt it down with, yep. with, with cameras and just thrill seekers and saw nothing. So it, it, it's not a matter of going out in force. These right. things have ways of doing whatever they do. Yeah, so, when, when, when they tried to find them, they couldn't. No. But when they weren't trying, they could. And he would appear to certain people. And actually, it's interesting that when he would appear to certain people, it seems like they would have things happen in their lives. Like, mm -hmm. th things would just turn disastrous. And um, they'd see him more than once, usually. So, Darren and Chad has a question. Um, Darren, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, he says, how close uh, do you think the Mothman movie was? I'm going to be personally honest. I don't know yet because I haven't watched it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think, I think that it was a good movie. I haven't seen it in a while, but I don't think it was that close, honestly. I really, I really think that, yeah, no, I, I think it's, it's good for Hollywood, but, um, I, I wouldn't, I would take it with a grain of salt for sure. So Mags in chat says, is there a cause and effect to any incidents where he appears? Well, it's funny that you say that because the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant, Mm -hmm. Back in 1967, yes, uh, he was seen on the bridge yes. during the day, which is rare, by the way. Right, just before it collapsed. Yes, um, actually, the Chernobyl uh, incident. Yep. he was seen during the day. Fukushima at Chernobyl, Fukushima. He was um, seen also. Nine eleven. Uh, yep, Twin Towers. Before there was a, an outbreak of. Um, what sort of outbreak was it? The swine flu outbreak in Mexico. He was actually seen before then. Yep. So, um, yeah, there seems to be, I don't know if it's cause and effect or it's just, yep. I don't know. But it's kind of um, funny because Mama Deb in here said something about the um, the COVID. Has he been seen because of the COVID-19 going around? Well, is that a possibility of why he's been around the Chicago area? Maybe. 
how we don't know how Did hard it come hit from Chicago and not China. I don't know, but if you think about it this way, and this is an interesting thing before we break, um, Chicago is riddled with gang violence and with shootings. Mm-hmm. So is yep. he just drawn to the area because of that? Uh, pff, good it's question. something to think about. Is he seeming to be drawn to these areas? Is he causing it? Me. Is he releasing such such negativity that maybe because there seems to be. I don't know. There seems or to be evidence he's just to the support it. Vampire. it. Seems like I don't the know. Theory to me. Maybe he's a pretty, pretty intense one. That's some good things to think about. Yes, it is very good. But all right, we're going to take a quick little break. Make sure you uh, get all your questions together for when we come back. Absolutely. The song I'm going to play is from Digital Mike over at SoundCloud. Check them out. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cryptid Files. Welcome back. Welcome. I didn't time my coffee obviously good enough. I guess you didn't. Not. No, it's still making. <laughs> That's okay. When I'm, I'll um, go over this account and you can uh, finish your coffee. Get awesome. Your fix. Yeah, um, this, this is where the interesting part is with... Um, Point Pleasant and a, a gentleman named um, Woodrow Derenberger. Nice name, Derenberger. Um, yeah, he was a salesman. And um, during the time that things happened, actually before, um, I believe, the, the Mothman sightings, uh, this man had a really odd encounter Um and it, it's, it's just, I, I was going over it, it's really interesting. Uh, this is, he had it in an area, um, in West Virginia, actually, Point Pleasant, where, 
um, the uh, there were the deaths of 46 people in one of the most shocking ro roadway tragedies in American history. So that is where it actually started. Um, and this was in 1966, so it was before the Silver City Bridge collapsed. And it was in around 7.30. Um, and Woodrow Derenberger was, he was a sewing machine salesman um, from Ohio. And his home was in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. So... He was um, out on Highway 77, um, and another vehicle came up beside him and passed him. He described it as, as the strangest thing he'd ever seen. It resembled a kerosene lamp chimney, and it was flying six inches off the ground. The vehicle came around him, turned sideways, crossed both lanes of the road in front of him, and gradually made him slow down to stop onto the side of the road. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. After that, the door opens, and a grinning man, now he described this, this grin as way too big. And, um, you know, we've all seen movies um, where those grins are just, you know, they have the, the CGI, or the, you know, they do the funny thing like where the Jim grins Carey are just way, the yeah, the grins are way too big. Well, this was what this guy looked like, and mind you, this was 1966. He said the man stepped out of the vehicle, and the door shut with a loud thunk behind him. A few seconds later, now this is this kerosene lamp chimney thing. And you, you know what the top of a kerosene lamp looks like, the, the top, the glass part? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so um, after he stepped out of the vehicle, the vehicle climbs to 40 feet in the air above the highway. And it, the wait, man. Wait, wait, wait. Is this a scene from Back to the Future? It sounds like it, doesn't it? It's really weird. So the man walked up to, he was in a dark suit, black suit. He walks um, to the right side of the truck and spoke to this guy telepathically, Mr. Uh, Derenberger. And he asked him to roll his window down and um, told him, I'm not going to hurt you. And he actually addressed him by his name. And he. Um, there, uh, Woodrow asked him what he was called, but the man sort of didn't understand. And um, in response, he said that he was called cold. Cold? Cold. Me too. And um, mm -hmm. so he asked him, you know, he said his name was cold. He said that he could see that cold noticed the lights coming from Parkersburg, West Virginia, off in the distance in the sky. And um, he asked him what was over there. And Derenberger told him that he was seeing the city of uh, Parkersburg. And he said, no, Parkersburg is more of a place of business. And most of the people live on the outskirts of town. So, I mean, I don't know. It's very strange. So the whole encounter goes on. And he told him um, after, before he left that it was nice talking to him and that he would be seeing him again. And then he... Um, just walked away which is it, the whole thing is very strange but um he got back in the craft and he it closed and shut behind him and it went off into the distance just off and so from then on the man's name um, became i guess from telepathy that Woodrow Danberger said the man's name is Indrid Cold but he is not the only person who has had experience with Indrid Cold so, that's last the name? very first incident. His last name is Cold? Yeah, Cold. Indrid Cold. And a lot oh, of people... Cold. <laughs> cold. <laughs> but but he's not the only person that's seen him. Eyewitnesses have seen him, um, and they refer to him as a man in black, or some people see him as an alien. Um, people see him as different things, but they all know that it's Indrid Cold, and it, it speaks to them telepathically. Now, if you are going to believe that this is an alien of some sort, then what the heck is he doing um, coming to uh, the area where, of Point Pleasant uh, right before the bridge collapse? Letting Does it have something to do with the Mothman? Because it, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this, uh, maybe this dude is like from the future or something like that, and he sends Mothman out. Maybe they work hand in hand, you know what I'm saying? Could be. 
and they, he sends Mothman to these areas. Hey, this is where you're going to go. I mean, because we've never actually heard of um, Mothman communicating in any way other than a screech or yeah. something to that so effect. Maybe so maybe Ingrid, 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 Ingrid whatever, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. communicates with Mothman telepathically to tell Could him be. where to go. And he flies to, example, the Silver Bridge in 1967. Well, yeah. And it says wherever he's been seen, injured cold. There are UFO sightings, disasters, or other strange phenomena that seem to follow him, I guess just like Mothman. Just 10 days after Woodrow Derenberger's encounter with Ender Cold, another series of bizarre events began to unfold all around the region. Receiving worldwide attention of the press at the time, Ender Cold seemed to be involved. Um, 1966 in um, Clendenin, West Virginia, uh, five men in a cemetery, and this is where they... Um, they saw it would look like a brown human being lift off from the nearby trees and flew over their heads. And this a is where this being. is where the Mothman part of this comes in. They were perplexed. It did not appear to be a bird. And that was the first of many to come. So I just want to answer a question real quick. Mags, uh, did anyone die on the bridge? Yes. 46 people. Yes, absolutely. They did. And some of the bodies were never recovered. Even some of the vehicles, too. Yes. Were, were not able to be recovered. I mean, the the mud is deep at the bottom of that river, and yes, um, it is. The t- I mean, it's a deep, very dick, very. Ooh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I don't <laughs> remember <laughs> if I put explicit on this. We know so what I'll she's thinking be now. Shay, <laughs> Shay, help! <laughs> we know what she's thinking about. Lovely. That's our. F- oh that's our boy. first. That's our first real blooper, guys. Is it? <laughs> so I love it. Darren <laughs> asks. Uh, is there another creature like the Mothman? Well, um, actually, I don't know if it's like the Mothman, maybe the Mothman's cousin, or if there are different creatures. But um, as we were saying before, during the um, cave collapse uh, in Germany in 1978, they referred to it as the Freiburg Shrieker because of the noise that it made. It won't be the last time she says it, Darren. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to gag and <laughs> just probably pass out. Have a oh, okay. All right. Enough of gagging. <laughs> yeah, and, and also dicks. he's so known as the. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Someone please. You know, me. I'm sorry, guys. Please, really, I'm sorry. But um, they also called him the um, the man dragon too. So yep. That's funny. That's also what they call me <laughs> in the streets. But um, wonderful. I'm not. Clear. Um. So, but the the recent accounts. You know, like I said, are near Chicago. Thank you. In um, recently, ni- November twenty sixth, actually of nineteen of two thousand nineteen, but um, the the accounts go from there. That was like the start, and from there, November nineteen sixty six. Of course, we all know about the Scarberries Whoops. and the Mallet uh, uh, two couples that encountered it near the TNT area. Um, and and it's all the same accounts with the red glowing eyes, the big, you know seven foot tall uh had its wings folded against its back at first because that's where people you know how people generally see it and they reported it to the police um uh in let's see 90 miles out of point pleasant there was another on the same evening another account um where they heard the weird noise some people did um the partridges and their dog began to bark. And so the man (laughs) went outside um, looking uh, for his dog because the dog ran off, and it was about 150 yards from the house. He saw the red eyes that looked like bicycle reflectors. So um, long story short, he never found his dog again. So, so uh, yeah, it is sad. It it goes on from there. Um, a lot of people, people go over to the um, TNT site and have feelings of doom. You know, it, it's it all led up to the um, the collapse of the bridge. And very shortly after that, um, the sightings tapered off and seemed to go away. But, um, you, you know, Woodrow Derenberger after the collapse of the bridge, because he really felt like, Indrid Cold was there to warn him, too, about the bridge, maybe. Or that he may have, because he had encounters with Indrid through his his life for a long time. Um, but uh, 
bad things were happening in his life. And he really felt like that he was supposed to warn people about the bridge collapse. And he didn't. And he felt guilty for it. Um, but uh, it's really interesting how the Indrid Cold thing and aliens and Mothman all kind of tie together in this whole incident. What makes this one tragedy more... Um, more active, I guess, than any other tragedies. Because even at 9-11, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe the research just hasn't been done, but 9-11 was a far larger scale disaster than the Silver City Bridge, but yet all this attention was given to that bridge in that particular incident when it happened um, by Mothman, injured cold, aliens, and all this. So I wonder why. Hmm. I don't know, but um, here's a little interesting fact about the Silver Bridge. Uh-huh. Some things that, um, something that people didn't know about the Silver Bridge. The Silver Bridge was built, I uh, can't give an exact date, so we're going to just use this as an example. It was built back when the T mo- uh, Model Ts were around the first yeah, cars. Yeah, right. Okay. The Model Ts weighed in approximately 1,500 pounds, mm-hmm. fully built. Now, the bridge was designed around the weight per car the length of the bridge right so from the 19 what maybe 30s 40s something to that effect all the way up to the 1960s almost 1970s so Mm -hmm. the bridge was severely outdated and um, some of the reports that day um, a lot of people spoke about how there were a lot of uh, tractor trailers and a lot of cars. It was yeah, Christmas. the traffic was backed up. It was, up. Christmas. It was, it was Christmas, Christmas time. Christmas. Yeah, people were shopping, and so and they were crossing the bridge. Yeah, from Ohio to um, West Virginia. There was some sort of holdup too, and yeah, I don't know what it was, but yeah, the 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 traffic was at a standstill on the bridge. Right. So right, yes, that definitely could be an issue. Um, I mean, you know something that i don't think was was thought over no it definitely wasn't i mean if it was they would have updated that bridge a long time ago it's just really interesting i to me it's just it makes you wonder why why were the why why were these all these things or these particular things drawn to this one area it's really odd um i do have uh some accounts that we can go over um the one is about the freiburg Shrieker. This one? I believe, is that it? I don't know. The fried bird Shrieker. Not the fried bird. The fried bird. Um, this is actually not. This is um, one about. from the Fukushima disaster. All right, so let's take a minute. What is it called again? It's the Fukushima disaster. Yeah, it's right here. Japan. Yeah, that is this one right here. This one right here? Is that one you Yes. Want? It's, this is it's the one you want? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes. That's the one I want. I am the tech guy. I am the Q guy. I am... I don't know what. (laughs) Mr. Techie? Yeah, I guess so. I don't want to really... I'm just going to kind of go over it. Be careful what you're doing here. Yeah, I'm very careful. I don't want it to um, get booted off, so let's still make sure we're going. All right, so we're still live. All right, go. Uh, we'll go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So this was, a, this was a man that was in Japan on business. Um, he had emailed a lifelong friend who was living in Japan and teaching English at a local school. He insisted on my staying with him for the duration of my stay, saying it would help me save money and make an expense report look better when I turned it in. My friend, I'll call him Tim for the sake of reputation and career, was a lifelong bachelor and had a fairly large apartment at, all by himself. Um, several days of a long meeting and group seminars, we decided to go out to uh, get a bite to eat in town. Um, so they went out to eat and after they were done, they decided to go toward the ocean and, um, check out the moonlight on the waves. Are you, are we, we're having a technical issue. No, we're not. And, we're having um, a meat issue. <laughs> I'm being annoying. Okay. So the friend Um, wanted to check out a biology station. Uh, Some of his graduate students had set up near Fukushima Power Plant. Um, So they approached it from the west, and they were walking along to, um, you know, just to get some exercise. And they came to a simple metal box that was bolted in the ground. Um, There were a myriad of weather vanes and other meteorological devices. Uh, The friend um, stated that the school science uh, class students had had a theory 
that just like water being used and discharged by the power plant that was warmed up by production of electricity and so on and so forth. So um, they were doing weather experiments from tidal patterns um, and different things with the ecosystem. So he said it was very complex and he was a little bit tipsy. So, you know, he, he kind of uh, didn't take it all in. He tied a few on. Yeah. So um, they uh, changed the subject when something all of a sudden was heard around them and it sounded like a loud distinctive whoosh at first um they thought it might be the sound of distant waves crashing on the shore but it was followed by an ear pitching screech that shook the person down to the bone and made the hairs on the back of their neck stand on end they looked around for the cause of the noise when they heard the sound again the best way he could describe it is city buses breaks again with this when they're in need of service, loud and ear splitting. We both continued to look around when my friend's attention was drawn toward the plant by another nearby couple. A younger couple that was out for a walk and were staring toward the plant, arms outstretched, and obvious fear in their voice showing itself. They looked toward the plant against the lights of the plant and saw a figure silhouetted against the moonlit sky. It was large and black from the distance that they were at. It was... Um, looked to be sitting on top of one of the squared shaped buildings It sat for five seconds and then it unfurled a large set of what you can only describe as large black wings the only reference they could compare it to was john travolta in the movie michael um the main character in furious uh i guess it, it, the wings looked very much like that to say that the creature was large was an understatement so it took flight and circled the plane at least four or five times. In some circuits, it took fast, and some it was slowed down. But it basically um, kind of wound its way down closer to the ground, about 20 to 30 feet off the ground. And it actually buzzed these people. Um, they were screaming, and, you know, the couple, well, they were upset, but it was actually coming down really close. And this is when they noticed the, um, the large glowing eyes and... Um, they it, it kept doing this and all of a sudden it just took off and um they all felt a feeling of dread and fear of course and i would too if the moth man was uh, buzzing me and uh it flew away and went back toward town basically so they really didn't talk about it much the guy gets home and when he gets home uh, a week before he was due to come to the U.S., the, his friend was due to come to the U.S., and he brought up the wedding rehearsal dinner. So they spoke about it a little bit, but nothing ever came of it. But basically, his friend messaged him and told him um, he woke him up out of a deep sleep with a frantic phone call telling him to turn on the TV. There came images of the devastation of the Japanese earthquake and the near total destruction of the city of okuma where his friend was living and working the day of the wedding the news came of the explosions of the local nuclear power plant and a cnn broadcaster the report we were both aghast as the same power plant that they had seen the strange bird-like object on was being shown on tv the fukushima plant was the exact same one they had seen the animal or being perched on um, they don't know if it was a coincidence. Uh, they found out about the Mothman and was wondering if that's maybe what it was. But the fact that they saw it there and a week later, um, the explosion happened. So it's a firsthand account right there, guys. And um, Very, very interesting. It's pretty freaking wild, if you ask me. It's There are too many of these coincidences for them to be coincidences, in my opinion. Well, obviously. I mean, you... It's, you know, it'd be different if you just saw him kind of, you know, on it's a nice... It's almost undeniable. A nice spring day, just, you know, gallivanting through the uh, fields and prairies, yeah. flying around yeah. in the blue sky. But no, it's always a disaster. And he's always seen at night. For the most part. There are some times when, the when, part. There are some times when he has been seen during the day. So... Interesting. But for the most part, yes. At night, why? I don't know. Maybe because he's black and he blends in better? Or maybe he has night vision. Duh. Maybe well, it's too I mean, bright during the day. I don't maybe know. he's not People nocturnal. describe him as a moth or a um, an owl anyways. So yeah, I, I can sense. see why he's being seen at night. 
Yeah. You know, the red eyes reflecting light. Yeah, yeah, that's So true. on and so forth, like we talked about with this um, is very a couple true. other different uh, types of cryptids. Uh, so Mag says, do you think that people in stressful situations are looking for some kind of salvation? The wings are angel-like, and they see that as a sign of hope. Well, I mean, the fact that these things are happening, um, the sightings are happening before these tragic incidents. So possibly during and after, yes, it's, I mean, I would think Maybe. that's possible. But I mean, he, he, he could be um, could be an angel warning you know, yeah. making himself known in a certain area on the example Silver Bridge and, you know, showing himself. So that, therefore, I mean, yeah, maybe. He very well could be. Um, Fran says, you mentioned the glowing red eyes and I think of Satan. It's how he could spread ruin. Well, all right. So um, like we've talked about with a couple other different cryptids, eyes glowing and everything right. else, um, this could be a uh, reflection of light. This could also be them... The color that their eyes emit so they can see at night because believe it or not some even some of your household animals can re, uh, create light with their own eyes to see better at night kind yeah. of like an infrared camera needs infrared lights to right see. they sure can it's interesting um also i mean the one gentleman who saw it in his bedroom did say that he felt like it was you know from the pits of hell, basically. Oh, yeah. Some people have said that. Other people have seen it as an angel or, or I mean, a, a good could, omen. Could be a good omen. Could yeah. it be that this is just a demon who knows that things are about to happen and he's there to just just collect that energy and incite that fear or just a, is a precursor? Yeah, he's probably like, hey, what's up? Yeah, this bridge is going to fall down. Yeah, yep. So you might just, you know, give me all your uh, your fear now. And, right. And I'm out of here. Right, I don't know. I mean, it's really weird. It's strange. There also is a good span of time in between things happening as well. I mean... Yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place, different countries, which is um, actually, actually kind of cool, let too. Let me see that, because you, you'd be... It's not just the U.S. and Germany and Japan. Um, there have been sightings of this creature... Ooh, if I can get we'll my life together here. Rip out all the cords. In um, Mexico, in Canada... England, Poland, See. Argentina, Brazil, and Russia. So, Whoa. all over the place. Uh, it's crazy. All over the place. All, I mean, many, many different times, many eras. Um, the weird thing about maybe the fact that this thing would be something evil is, and I wish there was more proof of this, the... 1970 incident of the Freiburg mine in Germany. So that's uh, you okay? okay. Hey. Yeah, you all right? I'm good. I, I'm messing everything up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that in that one particular incident, 35 miners were not, could not go into the cave in the morning when they first got there to work. This uh, being was standing in front of the cave and would not let them in. Of course, I'm not going to go near it. If you've got a big, huge, at first they thought it was a guy again, but um, it's that it shrieked at them. Oh, <laughs> so what did they do? This is this is what blows me away and what makes me think I don't know about this one. But so they decided since they could not go in the mine and evidently they still wanted to earn a paycheck, so they were going to go and pick up trash around the mine site while this thing stood there blocking the mine for them. Oh, yep. Not leave. Not call somebody. Nope. It was 1978 after I'd all. I'd walk up to that dude and be like, hey, let's take a selfie. Excuse me. They did not. <laughs> they were like, oh, Excuse we're going to go over here and we're going to, you know, pick up trash because I guess we're dirty miners. And, you or know. just walk right by him. Maybe they mm -hmm. thought that he was like the, 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 the trash police or something. But trash they, police? They, they, they picked up that? trash. I, yeah, sure they do. Oh, and so okay. they picked up trash. And... um. This thing shrieked at them a few more times. And then, shrieked like, that. you're not going in here. And then the mine actually collapsed that they were supposed to go into. Wow. I'm going to butt in here real quick, yes. Mags. Uh, the Mothman Prophecies was in 2002. 
As far as the sightings after that, uh, there's no reports. But there ha- no, there was reports in 2002, but not 2002. In yeah, I think it was 2002, but there was nothing as far as Point Pleasant. No, I can't I don't remember think so. where the sightings were, but they weren't in Point Pleasant. No, unless you got it written down there, I don't know. I have I lost um, my hallmark. The dog ate it. Actually, the bridge collapse, the other bridge collapse that was what in Ohio? No, where was that at? Ugh. Ugh. It was an ugh. No. Um, <laughs> there. That was in 2007. So I, I'm not sure about 2002. I know 2001. Um, you know the 9/11 that it was seen there. Um. And in Chernobyl. In 1986, but I don't know about 2002. I had it written down. The 2002 one you did? Yes. Oh, well, we'll have to look into that again. Damn it. It seems, it's really weird. I thought that Mothman Prophecies came out before that, but I don't know, maybe not. I don't think there was anything in 2002, to my knowledge. Well, it was based on the book of 1975. Yes. Yes, it was. Um... But to continue, the, the, the mine did collapse. And these guys said that sure, or immediately after it collapsed, that yes. the they looked back and this thing was gone. Mama Deb, I think you're right. Chicago was more recent. Yes, Chicago. The, the most recent case to come out of Chicago actually was on November 26th of 2019. And um, it was cited by a trucker um, then around 6.30. And in October, there was actually a sighting too. Um, was it 6.30 at night? Yes, 6.30 okay. at night. And there were two sightings in the village of Rosemont, um, north of Chicago, in October. So two very recent, or three very recent sightings, actually. So Yeah, there were also sightings in 2016 as well. I mean, they yeah. go from um, 2002 to 2013 and 14, 15, yes, and on 16, from there. and then in 2019. I just don't remember the exact places. Um, I had them written down. I <laughs> did re- research to see if in 2020 me. Um, there have been any sightings. And as of yet, I have... have uh, not found any in uh, 2020 from that area or anywhere else yet. So we're going to continue to research this. Our research does not end when our shows end for the week, guys. We keep on researching. Oh no! As soon as we get off here, we start talking about what we're going to talk about next. Yeah, we do. The research begins right then and there, and sometimes it brings us into two, three o'clock in the morning. Well, I'm I'm, I'm excited. Everybody just joining us in chat this is great guys um if any of you know of any recent sightings too that'd be really cool it was a little bit more difficult to um find any personal accounts because of course mothman is very obscure as far as sightings go it's not like bigfoot where there's a new sighting every day right and and if he's only coming out when there are disasters you know it's hard to look for him because you don't know when a disaster is gonna come about this is true so Keep your eyes in the sky as far as Mothman goes, you know, because you never know when you're going to see him. Well, I mean, hopefully you don't. And if you do, then you better be like, oh. You better tell somebody. <laughs> yeah. You better try to figure that out. I don't know. I don't know how you go about that, though. I mean, if he's on a bridge, it's it's pretty. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, sta- pretty standard like, hey, stuff. This hey, this bridge this, going yeah. down. Close it up. Do so. So I wonder if you subverted the disaster because how, you can't subvert a disaster like a fukushima plant disaster because that was the result of a of a um a an earthquake yeah but you can batten down the hatches i guess i don't know but Something why like would that? you build a nuclear power plant on a such a like such a high activity fault line in wait the first this place? was in china japan okay it's just really oh and also too for you guys that are interested there is a Mothman Festival every year in Point Pleasant. So a lot of paranormal enthusiasts and cryptid enthusiasts not only go to this um, uh, little celebration, but they also have booths there where you can go and, you know, you can uh, um, tell everybody what you're about if you're a paranormal or cryptid team. So it's an interesting thing. A lot of people go to it. You hearing stuff upstairs again? Uh, I'm always hearing stuff upstairs. Yeah, yeah, but I'm always hearing stuff in general. Well, I hope so. You have yours. Who said that? Yeah. 
<laughs> I will not do that right now. Maybe later. Wait. Oh. <laughs> but here's a little interesting thing. I actually tried to get the owner of the Mothman Museum, which is the only Mothman... It's contagious. Mothman Museum. There's only one. And it's in Point Pleasant. Point Pleasant. Pleasant. Absolutely. They also have a 24-hour um, live camera yes, in, they have in the square of cam. Point Pleasant. Yeah. So you I can go on there and look. And I almost had the owner of the Mothman Mothman Museum on tonight. But unfortunately, weekends were busy. It was for short notice, yeah. so we, we couldn't. So I just want to, uh, excuse me, I didn't mean mm-hmm. to interrupt. No, you're fine. But I just want to shout out to, uh, now, p- forgive me for Ooh. pronouncing the name wrong, but Jeff Wes- Wesley. Yeah, Wasley. Wasley. Mm-hmm. Jeff Wasley. Thank you for returning my emails. That was great. Maybe next time. Well, maybe even if he can't come on, we can just pre record an, an interview with him, yeah, which maybe. would be wonderful. We are going to start getting um, interviews in with these shows, too, here and there, guys. So. But, um, yeah, if you're ever in Point Pleasant or you go to celebrate the Mothman, uh, definitely you have to go to the museum. Absolutely. Uh, also, there's a great um, Small Town Monsters uh, a gentleman named Seth, Seth Breedlove who um, does the Small Town um, Monster uh, compilation of uh, movies uh, did a movie on Mothman, which is very interesting, too. So if you guys want to be entertained and... Um, have a good time. Look up uh, Small Town Monsters. I think it's Mothman of Point Pleasant. Look that up because that is a really good movie. has a lot of good information in it too. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more, check that one out for sure. And always support you know, your um, independent filmmakers because they are the bomb, if you ask me. Yeah, there's actually some pretty good docu- documentaries. But uh, the one that Seth Breedlove did on the Mothman was actually pretty good. It's the best. Yeah. He has several. He's about to come out with a new um, movie this year. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be on the Mothman again. I'm Ooh. not sure. I'll have to check and see. But I'm excited. Because any time he comes out with a new movie, I'm ready to go. I love it. It's good stuff. This is just a random suggestion off the top. It has nothing to do with Mothman. But I think personally that we should look into doing some local interviews and accounts. That's funny you mentioned people that. Around. It was just, I don't know. I because just we are about actually going really to cool. do that. You guys, um, as we speak about more, more in depth about the big guy, and we all know who he is. Hide and seek champion, champion of, of the world. world. He's big foot. Foot. Yes. He's my favorite. Um, so we cheesy. are going to get local accounts and get um, local people to either pre-record or um, maybe even come on the show so we can re- cool. get in these really good accounts because I want to bring you more. After all, Bigfoot is what started all this, and that is where my heart lies. And now that we are able to get out again, we're going to start doing some more field research because okay. I'm it's killing <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> It's killing me. I just want to be in the woods. I do too. I'm big time. For the ride. And um, I want to get frustrated because nothing's happening. You know. Yeah. As per usual. It's you not mean per getting usual. frustrated that nothing's happening when we're here too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same as going out in the woods. Is that uh, what you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that tomorrow night, perhaps tomorrow we night. might. Get out in the woods. Let's do an overnighter. We have. The I mean, we can. Let's just rough there, are, it. We, there are many places I'll we make could a go. Lean to. We'll, we'll, I'll just lay. You and your lean tos. They're fine. They're freaking. Yes, they and are. I'm good at it. We, you can't tell me I'm not good at it. We love to be out I'm like in the woods. Freaking Survivor man. She builds things. She's like you're like the what's what, what's the guy on Mountain Monsters? I don't know. Oh, yeah. the dude that swings from the trees. Yeah. I'm so him. You, you're that one. I'm so him. You're that guy. Definitely. She's definitely that oh, guy. Yeah. She's um, always I'm, making stuff out there. I'm more like the union. Employee who just stands there and watches, like you know, make sure Pocahontas. everybody's still there. So I think I would be Trapper. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be. And the, I'd be the security guy. He'd be the who? Who's that guy uh, that? Oh, oh man, my bu- god! Uh, bu- bu- 
uh, Huckleberry. Huckle- I was about yeah, to say Huckleberry. Huckleberry. My name's Huckleberry. <laughs> Tingleberry. <laughs> My name's Huckleberry. He's they the one that was. He was. Uh, he was. He's the one that came into contact with the. What is? What was it? The Wendigo. Oh yeah, and he was butt naked. He was butt naked running John. through the woods. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that would be John. I will yeah. not admit or deny <laughs> if her. I have ever been butt naked in the woods. Well, please don't do either. Please do I, that. No, I, I am. I am. I am begging that's you. That's for another time. I feel like without please. me here. <laughs> if you do that, I won't take you in any more caves. Do we have that sound bite? Don't that we say play? that. I don't know what you're talking that? about. I don't can have it. Can we please I don't. play that? On, I magically lost it. Oh, he magically come on, did. Come on. No, nope. come on. I don't, play just I don't a little ha- snippet. You I won't do it. You, you won't do I, it. I can't give you no something balls. I don't have. Uh, you have it on your phone. You have it on your phone. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Lies. I don't have it on my phone. Because I sent it to you. I smoke cap. Yeah, I smoke cap too. smoke cap. Come on. Well, it's coming from both of your breaths. <laughs> <laughs> breaths. 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 Yeah, breaths. from your lies. <laughs> I do not have it on breaths. my phone. Oh, come on. This I is so don't great. I have it. Okay, well, the next episode. We're going to find it. The next episode, episode yes. If I can find it, it I will put it on it. here. Oh, oh, no. You will find it. Or if you I don't, I me. will. I send it to people. Listen to him. Christ, Listen to him where he's going to get mad radio. It's just like being at home. You are at home. That's why... If I find it, yeah, I will put it on here as a soundbite, and I will use it when I can't tolerate something anymore. Because <laughs> I will give you an example of what happened in the cave. I'm claustrophobic. Very. So she drags me in this cave. No dragging. She had a leash around my neck with a pinch no collar and everything, so I had to walk. Collar. It was invisible. Right. So I get in there, and I'm you know <laughs> can't stand up straight, and I'm hating every minute of it. And I go like this. She said something to me, and I turned around and I said. I'm hating every, every fucking, fucking minute of this. <laughs> <laughs> but he said it repeatedly. Everything, oh, yeah. everything, everything was, was an f bomb, f bomb, f bomb, f bomb. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing a little bit, and oh, I'm so, so excited because I was in the cave. I mean, he did it. He did it when you were at I'm, work one day, I'm, and we went. Yeah, remember that? Yo, you flipped out. Okay, yeah. so, so, so I'm balls to the wall, getting in this cave, like so yeah, freaking excited, too, ready kinda. to go, and he's like. You know, behind me, I don't want to, you know, like, no, and I just keep saying, on. oh, but hold look on. over here. I see something over there. Look over here. Let's just walk over here. They're polar opposites when it comes to we, this we, stuff. We really are. I was Dude. trying to get as deep in the cave as I could. Yeah. I'm not really terrified of bugs. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> when there's like one, maybe two. But when there was like five million crickets, the camel not, spiders, whatever the hell you want to call cricket. them. If camel you don't crickets. live in Georgia, you need to look up camel crickets. Yo. Ugh. Or they are also called tiger crickets. These things were the most fucked up crickets I've ever seen. They are as big They're as terrifying. some of them. It, when they get fully grown, they can be as big as your palm. Oh. Yo. And they bite. And there were they do. So they many. they bite. But they they're not poisonous or anything. They just no. freaking hurt. No, they just they they chew. They don't even bite. They oh. take you can chunks. hear it. It's like listening to a deer chewing yeah, on acorns. Yeah, it's. They're usually this cave was littered with them. They were oh, small, but they were on the top of the cave. Cool. And I hate them, but I was so pumped. It's so cool in there. I was so pumped that I just was. I, I was gonna go further, but you do. There's we're like gonna a, need a raft to get yeah, any further. Yeah, because there's like a like a deep. There's like a like a cave part that goes down. Yeah. There's like a big deep hole. It's like it's ten a hole. feet down. It's a, fo- a hole full. It goes of water. down at least and under. ten feet down. And you can't really tell with the water in there, but if you shine a light on it, it's pretty far down. And then there's another. There's a whole other side to it, but we just haven't. We haven't gotten to, to it in. yet, and and I'm gonna. But oh, yeah. yeah, so um, caves are a no. They're no bueno for John. But I like them, so they're, they're gonna. Cool. I'm gonna go every in more fucking caves. minute of it. Because I know if I go into a cave, he's going to come after me. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> this video, if I can find it, this video, if I find it, y- you're going to die laughing. You will. So funny. You knew and felt <laughs> how I hated you every fucking terror, minute of it. He the did. The terror in his voice. And then the night when we heard a growl in the woods and I ran. Well, I didn't run. I didn't run. In my defense, we I do walked. We some hijinks. I, I, I jazzercised out. Jazzercised. And, um, I did the typical white boy thing. I was like, hey, wait a minute. Where'd that come from? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's check it out. No, we're leaving. <laughs> nope. I didn't even say we're leaving. I just said nope. Just and nope. I left. Nope. She ran. And he, I did Speed not run. Walk. You Speed did walk. run. I did not run. According to my disabled ankles, you were running. <laughs> that was not a run. <laughs> that was a run. That was a, my, that was a brisk jaunt. <laughs> That's running in my book. It's not in my book because my legs weren't going pump, pump, pump. My legs were going walk, walk, walk. 
pop, very quickly. Pop, pop, yes. yes. <laughs> like, love the references. <laughs> that's, that's because I'm from the North, Shay. The that's North. why I say it just like you do. Fucking. <laughs> fucking. Fucking. I fucking hate every minute fucking of it. Fucking hate every minute of it. <laughs> he hated when I was walking briskly, too. Oh, yeah. And he repeatedly that's said, babe, 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 Like that. It sounded like a gun firing off or something. It was. Yeah. So he, it was interesting. We get into some hijinks, and I like to record it because she it's thinks funny. it's fucking hilarious. It is, it is. Funny. It's funny. It's, it's pretty funny. I might just set it as my ringtone. Hate <laughs> <laughs> every fucking. Yeah, I didn't. Good needless times. to say, I didn't have any fun. So we'll see what oh, kind of on. interesting things we can fun. get into again, and um, see if we can, you know, stir this one up and get some good recording. Uh, we, yeah, we, we're trying to get good audio for you guys. It's really hard when you're out there. It is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this this show was originally to talk about cryptids and everything else and share with you our experiences as they unfold. But because of quarantine, we haven't been able to unfold anything other than nope. our bed sheets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is true. So hopefully tomorrow we will be able to uh, get back into the woods. And maybe Bigfoot has missed us so much that maybe. he'll actually make an appearance. Maybe. I don't or wanna, possibly I'd the rather, dog man. I'd rather not see. He might be just chilling in his in his lawn chair, you know, with sunglasses on. He's like, probably got like great. Yeah, no it humans is. around. Nobody to awesome. bother him. Like, stop bringing me damn candy bars. Oh, yeah. I wonder if that candy bar is still there. I think the no. Maybe. When I went there uh, the other week, I didn't see anything on the fireplace. But no, I didn't it wouldn't really, have been on the fireplace. We didn't really. Oh yeah, it's back you know the park the rangers yeah. probably come through there. You, the the there rangers were tons probably of come rock through. stacks though. It was really wicked. Like people yeah, were very rich. No, no, it was uh, all around the fireplace. Really, really? ritualistic looking. It was mm. weird. Oh, boy, I, w- I wouldn't put it past some of these really weird city oh people yeah. that come up here. Some damn shitty folks. But yeah, we're going to try to get into some more interesting mm. things and we miss being out in the woods and maybe go I over to Track Rock and ooh, ooh, ooh Track Rock. Don't say, I have to bring well, that rock yeah. back. Yeah, well, to go over oh and, and see if we can get get some more activity going there. You know, had I think you should keep the rock. No, I'm bringing it back. They no, want listen, it back. Listen, I'm listen, it back listen, listen. Why? I well, think I you can't find it anyway. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I think you should keep that rock Why? because the flesh runner was way worse. We don't say this is true. it anymore. The that one runner. episode that we did. That Last week's episode. Yeah. And we're not doing it again, by the way. We're not mentioning the name anymore. So no. if you hear it referred to as what? Flesh Runner. Flesh or Runner, or Meat Walker. Meat um, Walker or anything like that. Yeah. You know, Dermis we Jaunter. Dermis yeah, Jaunter. Dermis Jaunter. <laughs> or Dermis <laughs> Borrower. <laughs> or whatever the heck you want to call it. <laughs> by the way, if anybody is wondering to. Um, I'm we pregnant. Oh no! It's not Please. mine. <laughs> it's not yours. No, oh, it's mine. He's got some splint in though. Yeah, but uh, the puppy is oh, yeah. recovering very she well. We had to take her for another. She went on. Speaking the of which, she just peed on the floor. <gasps> Wonderful! Nice. Hey, and here she comes right now. So. For those that follow me on Facebook and everything else, um, we have a, what's called a Pyrador. P Y R D A. A Great Pyrenees and Labrador. And Labrador. No, A D O R. So it's a Great Pyrenees and Labrador. Anyways, um, got an ear infection, messed her up a, a whole bunch. She had a face like a catfish one day. And uh, she anyways. She looked like a pit bull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but before that, we had to take her to the yeah, emergency oh um, after right. hours clinic because. She was not moving, and oh, she was she lethargic. Yeah. She was crying. She was, she was, oh. she was in pain. Old. They they did not figure it out. We no, took her to another sucked. vet a few days later. They gave us a diagnosis of a joint infection, basically, um, and a and double ear infection. So yep. a, almost a week later, and her face all of a sudden is huge, and she's still not doing very well. She's doing. She a wasn't lot better, walking though. or anything, so she we had to take her again today. to the vet a few days ago. Again, again, vet visit number three, and they finally figured out is called puppy strangles, which sounds awful. Which is um, juvenile also, cellulitis. Yes, juvenile cellulitis in dogs, and basically it affects their joints and everything else. It's like puppy mumps, and um, they gave us uh, three different medications: finally internal antibiotics and steroids, and she is doing well. She's Dude. walking again and eating again. So she's doing the, good. They gave her uh, Benadryl and steroids along with the antibiotics and steroids to take home. Yeah. So a couple hours later, her face started going down. I left for work, come back 10 hours later, 
it was like, where did that other dog go? Her face yeah. was back to normal. It was just crazy how quick that yeah. medication like worked. You guys, she couldn't walk for a week. Literally, we had to do everything for her. And we didn't know she was going to make it. But she's walking like a normal puppy. She's yep. only three months old. So she's, she's a little three big. months old three and months twenty old. pounds. Yeah, but huge. yeah, she's doing great. So I know you guys. A lot of you asked about it, yep. and just wanted to let you know that she is a hundred percent. That's why you don't hear a puppy crying in the background like you did. Oh last yeah. Week. So stay tuned on Facebook because uh, she'll be going on a lot of adventures. Oh yeah, with she's, us. Our, yeah. she's our squatch dog. Definitely for and sure. My emotional sport dog. <laughs> <laughs> get medicine, yeah. yeah. All right. So why don't we call it quits for the night? I think right. we've done enough and of Mothman talk, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think so, too. Um, I, remember, guys, if you have an account that you want us to hear or you have a favorite cryptid that you would like us to feature on one of our shows, go to our email and shoot us a line. The email is gacryptocrew at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook on um, Unexplained Paranormal Georgia. So you can hit us up there as well, or if you have our personal information, you guys are our personal friends, you know, anybody that's had an encounter of any sort of cryptid or anything strange, for that matter, let us know. So Until um, then. Just remember that absence of proof is, is not, not proof, proof of, of absence. absence. Good night, guys. Later.